Good afternoon to you, Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com. It is Wednesday, the 18th of May, 2022, and on today's edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, as I guess the Avatar version of me, where did the hurricane go? That's what we're going to talk about today. I appreciate the art department, Kari, coming up with that. Uh, yeah, where did it go? Where'd that hurricane go that the GFS has been showing? Because it doesn't really show it anymore, and a lot of people... Uh, we're saying that that would happen, and it turned out that they were right. And there's a reason. Let's look at this tweet, first of all, to start things off. Uh, this is from a few days ago when it was really showing up in the guidance, run after run after run. Uh, this tweet was from May 16th, I believe it was. Yep, right there. Uh, from our good friend Dr. Klopsbach, he said, uh, the most recent Atlantic hurricane during May was Alma on the 20th of May, 1970. I wasn't even born yet. Uh, missed it by a few months. Um, while the Atlantic has had at least one named storm form in May each year from 2018 through last year, it has been roughly 52 years since the Atlantic has had a full-blown hurricane in May. So it hasn't happened in my lifetime, right? So that means it's really hard to get a hurricane in May. Climatology exists for a reason. Uh, the ingredients have to be there. We talked about this yesterday. You could have warm water. You might have the disturbance, you know, the Central American gyre, the tropical wave that comes in, the moisture. But it doesn't mean that you do get a hurricane as the end result. It's been uh, basically 52 years once we get to May 20th, so we're two days shy of that. Uh, it, it's very hard. It's very hard. So what happened? Well, going back to Andy Hazelton making an appearance again today, this is... A lot of GFS runs, uh, just kind of sampling the different, you know, ping pong effect here of the May hurricane that existed only in the matrix of the GFS. And as Andy says, the tale is old as time here, the GFS correcting southwest and, very important, with less convective bias. I don't know why that's green, but that's okay. Note that this doesn't mean the GFS can't be trusted at all this season. It's a good model, but it has its biases. And you know what, folks, especially way out in time, you know, beyond the five-day time frame, there's a reason why we don't have reliable forecasts where you can say it's going to rain, there's going to be a thunderstorm, there's going to be dry, there's going to be cold, snow, a hurricane, a tornado, whatever the case may be, five, six, eight, 10, 12, 16 days out. There's a couple of companies that try you know, one of them I think has a 45-day forecast. That's different. That's marketing. That's not real weather. Um, five days is a basically our limit. That's the way it is. And we should be thankful that we even have five days. So don't go getting all, you know, down on the GFS. That's the main American model, the operational. It's uh, picking up on the symptoms, though, that the season is going to be busy through here. We're seeing that in the climate modeling, loaded for bear. It's coming, and this is showing us what's going to happen later, I do believe. It's just too early. It's too early. That's all it is. Uh, more from Andy, and this is important. While there probably won't be a hurricane moving into the Gulf from the Central American Gyre, it does look like some tropical moisture will surge north. And as he says, fingers crossed that this will put a dent in the drought, especially in the western Gulf. You guys have been really dry over there. Not sure how far, how far west it will get, though, he goes on to say. Now, this is from tropicaltidbits.com. You know that site from Dr. Cowan. And this is the total precipitable water anomaly, the PWAT, the precipitable water. And this is the anomaly, the departure from normal. And look at the green there. It's not excessive, but it does start to get into Texas here. And that's good because it has been dry. In fact, I was over here. Uh, near Midland, Odessa, about a week ago during that severe weather that was in the plains. And I'm telling you, you see that movie Interstellar? Um, I liked it, a good Christopher Nolan movie. And it was all about the dust and the blight and the changing earth uh, in the future. It's a science fiction movie. But it reminded Matt and CJ and myself of that movie. Very apocalyptic out there. And I'm not being dramatic. I'm serious. I posted a couple of videos about it on Twitter uh, it's very dry and very dusty. Not saying we're getting into the dust bowl or anything, but you could use the rain out there. I even got to stop and visit one of our longtime friends and supporters, Linda, and her husband in Odessa. 
And I mean, you almost have to take your plates and turn them upside down to keep the dust off of them, like in that movie. So you could really use the moisture, and without the hurricane blocking that moisture, acting as literally a wall to it and sucking it all up, the moisture will be able to stream north out of that Central American gyre. There's your gyre right there, this cyclonic turning over a larger scale, and it'll swing that moisture around, and any troughs that come in from the northwest will help to scoop that moisture up. And this is just one snapshot out at about 90 hours. Uh, we'll take a look at it in an animation in a minute. But this could be a good thing overall. You know, Take the hurricane out, keep the moisture, you get the rain without the wind. And then again, it's not in the five-day, it's not hurricane season yet, but the National Hurricane Center is issuing tropical weather outlooks. There's nothing on the two-day, there's nothing on the five-day outlook. You can see that here. And uh, the same is true for the Eastern Pacific. Nice and quiet out there. So looking at the satellite imagery this afternoon from Tropical Tidbits and Animation, you look at that and you go, oh, look, there it is. It's starting. Well, there is an impulse down in the Southwest Caribbean, but it's not organizing, it's not coalescing, um, and it by itself is not going to be enough to get things going. I'll show you more about that in a minute. Uh, strong upper-level winds out here in the eastern Atlantic, a little bit of convective activity coming off of the coast of Africa. Very strong southwesterly winds across the western Atlantic, through the Caribbean, and even across the Gulf here. It's early. Again, there's a reason why this tweet is very, very appropriate. We don't have hurricanes in May since I've been born, all right? So the visible version of this, switch it over to visible. Such an amazing set of tools we humans have. Um, you get a shot here. Look at the dust. You can just see this sort of milky color. And I talked about that yesterday, a big Saharan outbreak, Saharan air layer rolling across the Atlantic. That'll also help to put a literal blanket on things. And look, you can actually see it. This is our live cam down in the Virgin Islands at Brent's Place. That milky color in the sky right there, that hazy look, that is the Saharan air layer. Uh, brought to you live. Any television networks showing you live Saharan air uh, videos? Uh, I, I don't think so. Let's see if I can get out of this. Um, how do I exit full screen? This is going to be, there we go, let's do that. All right, almost messed up the entire presentation. Uh, trying to be a smart aleck about that we have live video from the Virgin Islands. Anyway, yes, lots of Saharan dust coming across the Atlantic. And you can even see that, even though you don't see it, speaking of disappearing, the hurricane disappeared from the GFS. Look down here, let's use white, that'll help pop this. Why is this area all blank through here? There's no little pockets of yellows or oranges or reds or even that sharp white color. That's vorticity. That's the energy bundling. There's none in that area that I outlined. That's where all the Saharan dust is. So there you go. You can't have both. Now, sometimes you'll get a tropical wave uh, at the front end of the Saharan air layer, uh, but we don't have that right now. There is a little bit of energy, though off of Colombia in South America down there. See that pours off the mountains, that convection we see, but it's elongated, it's not circular, it's not bundling up, um, and it's not gonna amount to much. The models are aware that it's there, and they don't do much with it. The Saharan air layer, the time of year, the upper level winds not cooperating, should, should keep us from having to deal with breaking that record of no hurricanes by May 20th, uh, going back 52 years. Water temperatures are certainly warm enough, that's for sure. Gulf of Mexico, generally warm enough everywhere, just a small area here in the Northeast Gulf that's still holding on. And a little bit of upwelling may be going on in the Western Gulf and certainly near the Yucatan, those strong southerly winds pushes the water away, water away creating that upwelling uh, where the water comes up from below. So I just wanted to show you that, I look at the loop current too, you can really see that outlined. Um, so the Gulf is ready. The other ingredients are not. All right, so here's one of the loops I wanted to show you. This is the relative humidity at the 700 to 300 uh, millibar layer of the atmosphere. And this goes out to five days. And you can see the GFS basically has everything kind of squashed down here in and around Central America. Uh, this only goes out 120 hours, but nothing really coalescing uh, to, to form a tropical cyclone. But it does present a problem for our friends in Central America. A lot of rainfall for Honduras, Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador, 
maybe Panama and Costa Rica. So do keep that in mind. This is the vorticity version, and this goes out to five days. There's that strong ridge. Let's outline it for you to make it easy to see. There's that ridge in the atmosphere out here. This is the lower 5,000 feet. So we're not, you know, this is the lower part of the atmosphere, 850 millibars, meteorologically speaking. That's about 5,000 feet up. There's that energy, and you see it's stretched out. Everything's stretched out. It's shoved in and around Central America. But again, that comes with its own set of problems that it could be very rainy, excessive rainfall, flash flooding. We do have people that watch these videos down in Central America. You might know people down there. You know, make them aware. Look, it doesn't take a hurricane to create hurricane scale problems, hurricane level problems. Heavy rain is heavy rain. I don't care what it comes from. So no hurricane in the next five days, probably in the next seven days. Very confident of that, but also very confident that this will bring, as especially this animation shows, a tremendous amount of moisture to Central America. And then as uh, Mr. Hazelton pointed out, maybe we can get some of that to funnel up in here to Texas, and we'll just have to see how far west it goes. And that plays into the severe weather potential, possibly getting some of that moisture to stream all the way up into the southern plains. Slight risk here and there. Oh, man, it would be great to be out there today. I, I said that yesterday. Uh, hoping to go back out after the 25th. I also said that yesterday. But, yeah, that moisture, since the hurricane won't rob it, because there's not going to be a hurricane, we should continue to fuel Tornado Alley up through here with no major outbreaks, but just regional isolated spots, maybe some low precipitation supercells, big hail, that kind of thing. Uh, tomorrow, that previous map was today. Tomorrow, enhanced risk up here uh, in Wisconsin, Minnesota, and parts of Iowa, so pay attention to that. Slight risk all the way down in my neck of the woods. That'll be interesting because it's going to also be about 95 degrees here in Wilmington, North Carolina tomorrow. That should be fun. And then on Friday, a little bit of a trough is coming through, some energy uh, tapping into that moisture and instability. So the slight risk is up here uh, through Missouri and Illinois through the lakes there, Lake Michigan across Michigan itself. And not to be left out, you folks up here in the Rockies, Idaho, eastern Washington, tiny bit of Oregon and western Montana, just general garden variety thunderstorms and the same is true in the extreme southeast part of the lower 48 for Friday. Um, again, I'm hoping to see one more trip right out here later in the month. And uh, with no hurricanes taking all the moisture, I bet that does get to happen. All right. I don't know why my email is open. That's fine. Let's go to this. It was open because I needed to open this graphic. Uh, I appreciate Kari adding our Instagram icon and our TikTok icon. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Going to do more. And I've talked about this recently. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more quickly. Starting June 1st, every morning. It's going to be called What's Up in the Tropics with Mark Suttoth. About 90 seconds or less. Just what am I thinking about? Just a real quick. Might throw a couple of graphics on top of it. I'm just going to look right at the camera and give you the what's up. You know, in the morning. It'll go on. And I, you know, Kari's going to shoot me. And we need to add Spotify there, too, because... I can throw it on Spotify as well. So I'm going to give you pretty much every platform that's uh, really relevant out there. A quick look in the morning. Uh, what am I watching for the day ahead? And then in the afternoon on YouTube and our Hurricane Track Facebook page, the longer detailed hurricane outlook and discussion. I think that's a good plan. We'll set the tone for the day every day. And let's see if we can go all 180 whatever days. 186 days or whatever the hurricane season is, that I do one in the morning. Because even if there's nothing happening, I can get up and tell you that in 90 seconds. It's an easy-to-produce thing, uh, very easy to, to digest and absorb and take in, uh, right? Because it's not lengthy. So look for that starting June 1st. I'll do some rehearsing, try to get my format and my delivery down, and you know, we'll, we'll have fun with it. Make it an easy way to start your day, and uh, we'll be ready for hurricane season. Whatever it does. I like that. It almost looks like Star Trek there. Um, it, it was an accident, I promise. So that is it. Let's get this online for you. As always, I do appreciate you tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth, Hurricane Track. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.